Okay, in, in a nutshell, the basic plan of this place, the basic management plan, allows for this the whole 22-acre production zone to become a managed old-growth forest. That's the long-term goal. And in, uh, in trying to achieve those objectives, what we're generally doing is thinning out, at the moment, thinning out the smaller trees, allowing the bigger ones to get ahead. And how old are the bigger trees here? The oldest ones we have are late 90s, almost 100. And we have a few scattered trees in that category. They were left in 1955 when they, when they clear cut the place. Oh, how when many acres? It was acres? logged over, it's 40 acres in total. Uh -huh. When it was logged over in, in the mid 50s, um, they left a few clumps of trees here and there and those trees are now about 100 years old. And those trees stay in the forest all the time. That's, that gives us a sort of leg up into the sort of old growth type forest. And roughly how big are those diameter? They're probably, oh, nothing much, nothing bigger than 30 inches of breast height. Mostly 20, 24. They have, they're not that big, they were cull trees. Oh. And this little spot here where Howard's pulling the logs out, um, the trees in this region are shallow rooted. You can tell that by the buttressing on them when you get up close to them. And I think the drought we had two years ago stressed them because they were um, they were starting to die out. Are we in the way here? No. Okay. Barely. They were starting to die out. The one on the far side was dead. And after I felled it, I realized I probably should have left it for a wildlife tree standing. So, um, so we're leaving the butt log as a wildlife log. Okay. And uh, that a butt bit. log there is a the bit. short butt log. It's staying a as a wildlife log. Oh! A little bit. Oh! So it looks like you have some you know, mixture here. Is that alder over there? Yeah, this is a grove, grove of alder in here. It's all wet up through here, and the fir here is sort of growing in amongst it. And was the, were the was the fir replanted after they did the? No, fir? no, this is natural regeneration. Okay. And it's the forest is mostly Douglas fir. A little, you, a little bit of ground fir and incense cedar mixed in, but the majority is Douglas fir. Are you doing any replanting here? Um, yeah, we're currently we're planting some hemlock and we're doing, uh, we're sort of replanting the riparian zone which has been historically trashed due to sheep grazing. It's just a, it's a meadow and we're filling in some of that meadow with, with trees. What kind of trees? Um, mm, Douglas fir mixed with valley ponderosa pine and I'm going to squeeze some of these hemlocks in there. There's grand fir and um, western red cedar. In there and we're looking at all sorts of things we've got them fairly closely planted in some places about three feet apart and we might in as they grow up we might thin them by digging those out and selling them as live organically grown Christmas trees yeah that might be sort of part of the thinning process At the moment they're planted really thick just to make sure that if they get attacked by the voles which are a big problem in meadow areas that no. some of them will make it the vole the voles a little rodent and it girdles the trunk Oh. Under the grass, you have to keep the Is grass clean back. Or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lives in it lives in old mature forest and it lives in meadows. But in meadows, it has a very large population, and in forest, it has a tiny population. Is that what they call the tree vole? Yeah, I think it might be the same guy. Hmm. Yeah, might, I'm not sure about that. It might be the same guy. Yeah. But out in, out in the meadow, their populations are huge because they've got lots of food. And one thing they do do is they girdle young trees. Mm. When the grass is plastered all down around them, they'll come in there and just chew the bark off. All right, and that's all she wrote for, for conifers. Once they've done that, they're dead. <laughs>